Good morning. I'd like to welcome the Vardy Institution to St Andrews. Uh, we're going to present on behalf of the Next Genna project this morning. So it will be myself, John Irvine, and Yun Jung Kim who will present. So Next Genna is a project about sodium ion batteries. We believe these are safe, sustainable, and scalable. The project is, is led by myself, Rob Armstrong, and Nuria Tapia Rees, the project leads. Uh, Scott Lilly is the program manager, and Dr. Yunjun Kim is our senior postdoc who will present our first case study shortly. So, why sodium ion batteries? Uh, sodium ion batteries are inexpensive, sustainable, safe, and scalable. They're cheap because there's lots of sodium. There's 1,000 to 10,000 times more sodium in the crust than lithium. In addition, we don't need to use a copper current collector because of the electrochemistry. So this is both cheap and again sustainable. Um, uh, there's no cobalt, which certainly saves on toxicity and cost. But also there's a very important ethical issue about how cobalt is currently mined in terms of both politics and slave labor. And indeed the cost we would estimate is about 70% of, of the best uh, lithium ion alternatives, at least based on the materials balance. In terms of competing with conventional energy storage, which is usually lead acid, um, having no lead is certainly a, a, a good option in terms of sustainability and environmental impact. The material the batteries can be very safe and they can be transported or stored at zero volts. Uh, which is really important, and there are excellent safety testing results already. In terms of scalability, because the chemistry is similar to lithium ion batteries, um, and diverse chemistries are possible, uh, we can do all this using conventional lithium ion manufacturing plants. So our mission is to improve the energy storage power and lifetime of sodium ion batteries while maintaining safety and cost advantages. Um, sodium ion batteries are on the cusp of commercialization. Uh, if we can make performance improvements, to further reduce costs and broaden and application and, and increase impact, that will really help take the technology forward to the next generations. And an example of where sodium ion batteries are coming to the market is the um, collaboration uh, between Faradian and the Indian government agencies to manufacture lithium, so to manufacture sodium ion batteries in India. Um, so the intention is to manufacture the batteries there, um, but the cells will be manufactured elsewhere, hopefully in the UK. So in developing our prototype sodium ion batteries in the project, we want to show that they're safe, use sustainable and cheap materials. Uh, we want to improve durability, so we're targeting 2,000 cycles to 80% capacity over a wide temperature range. Increase energy density to more than 150 watt hours per kilogram or 300 watt hours per litre, and or to make them more powerful, so more than 1,000 watts per kilogram. The new prototype should be able to displace lead acids batteries in the first instance. Uh, this is for energy storage from renewables in particular. Uh, they should be more cost effective than lithium, so we often want to use large battery banks and, and cheap batteries are, are really important. And this can enable the electrification of new markets. In particular, I, I would emphasize that sodium ion batteries expand the battery market and not very far from intended just to displace lithium ion. The approach in NextGena is developing new positive and negative, negative electrode chemistries. Uh, we're going to optimize existing chemistries and explore alternatives. This is guided by computational insights and uh, synthetic strategies. Uh, we're going to look at electrolytes and electrode electrolyte interfaces. Um, this is a very understudied area, and we're going to optimize existing and explore alternatives. We're going to look at aging and link this to the Faraday Institute's degradation project. 
And in particular, we're going to look at engineering the secondary electrolyte interface using additives and prefabrication techniques. Again, this is a fairly new approach for sodium ion. In terms of scale up, and we're going to uh, collaborate closely with our industry partners. Uh, we're establishing a new scale up facility at St Andrews, which is coming from alternative funding. And one, one key aspect that we target is to have the coater in a dry space for more, more, more moisture sensitive chemistries. Underpinning all this is the advanced characterization platform, which is a, a toolbox of cutting edge capabilities. This involves state of art in, instrumentation in our laboratories, um, including the center facilities and indeed linked to international laboratories. The emphasis is on in situ and operando capabilities, and it's supported by an online platform called ULAB, which you can see on, on our website, and you can link to that to find out more about the capabilities. So can I introduce Yun Jung to present case study one? Thank you. Thank you. The first case study is about oxygen redox in P3 structured manganese-based sodium oxides. P3 structure is one of polymorphs of sodium manganese oxides, where sodium ions are occupy in trigonal and prismatic sites, where, whereas the manganese ions are located on octahedral sites within a trigonal unicell with ABB CCA oxygen stacking. Oxygen redox of this type of compounds is little studied, although the structure, the phase is obtained at lower temperature around 660 degrees, which is eco-friendly. So we've been carried out case studies in order to understand oxygen redox behaviors in P3 type compounds as a function of uh, substitute elements and or transition metal vacancies. First material investigated is 20% magnesium doped sodium manganese oxide prepared using co precipitation method to bearing sintering conditions under air with quench or under oxygen and slow cool. Both materials have an implant honeycomb ordering between magnesium and manganese. The material prepared under more oxidizing conditions shows a 4% transition metal vacancies confirmed by ritual refinement. The presence of transition metal vacancies triggers a novel oxygen reduction at 4.2 volt on top of the 1 at 2.7 volt, which stems from substituted magnesium. In addition, the compound having 4% transition metal vacancies exhib exhibit uh, greater structural reversibility within P3 phase, and details of this work will be presented in a poster. Second material is 20% cobalt stopped sodium manganese oxide. Again, two samples were prepared as the same method as, ma as magnesium doped samples. Although this compound contains cobalt, it's still worthy to investigate as a model compound that has no ordering in transition metal layers. The sample prepared under air with quench doesn't show no doesn't show any evidence for an ion redox. However, the sample prepared more oxidizing synthetic conditions demonstrates a reversible process at 4.21 volt with very small hysteresis. Besides that compound in, shows enhanced cyclability. Based on various characterization techniques, we can conclude that 6% transition metal vacancies were formed, just, just simply changing sintering conditions that triggers oxygen redox, stabilize, stabilizing like label oxygen. So far, we've seen that transition metal vacancies are essential to stabilize oxygen redox. Now I'd like to show you another mechanism to activate oxygen redox observed for 20% nickel doped sodium manganese oxide. This sample was prepared in air with quench and exhibit honeycomb ordering between nickel and manganese. In depth studies using various spectroscopic techniques allow us to propose that the formation of nickel 3D and oxygen 2P hybridization is responsible for oxygen redox that occurs via reductive coupling mechanism with nickel. Move on to the case study two. Thank you, Yunjo. 
So in the next case study, we're going to look at a negative electrode. So this is sodium titanate. Uh, this operates at about 0.3 volts versus sodium, so it offers a, a safer platform. Uh, and the work is a collaboration between Lancaster and UCL, or between experiment and theory. So the approach that, that Lancaster carried out is heating sodium titanate with urea and then firing it at 450 in an inert atmosphere. This gives a, a reduction to the sodium titanate, which was intended to improve the conductivity. And you can see that the thought is that there's a conducting shell on the outside of the sodium titanate. But from the X-ray diffraction pattern, you can see that there's an additional phase, Na2Ti6O13 being formed. And from the EPR, you can see that there's confirmation that there's um, electronic, there is reduction of the sodium titanate and oxygen loss. The electrochemical performance doesn't change too much, ex except in terms of stability on recycling. Uh, the more urea that's used in the, in the synthesis, uh, up to 20% by weight, uh, the higher the, the capacity retention. So the re reduction improves recyclability. And if we look at the impedance, you can see that the charge transfer resistance decreases on reduction in, in urea. And that's what we believe improves uh, the rate performance. So that the higher performance at higher rates. To understand the, the formation of the, the sodium titanates, we investigated the stability and it transpires that uh, Na2Ti6O13 is indeed a stable phase. And when we get rearrangement of the structure under heating and, and reduction, uh, we end up with the uh, this sodium titanate. And it's the combination of the two phases that gives us the, the highest performance. So the electronic structure calculations uh, show that there's a, a decrease in the band gap for the sodium titanate, that in turn facilitates charge transfer and is confirmed by X-ray absorption spectra studies. So to summarize next genera, uh, sodium ion batteries are an emerging technology right on the cusp of commercialization. Their advantages are they're inexpensive, they're sustainable, scalable, and are safe. Uh, we seek further performance improvements to reduce costs and enable new applications. Uh, our mission is to improve energy storage, power, and lifetime of sodium ion batteries while maintaining the safety and cost advantages. In terms of two case studies, um, looking at the P3 type layered metal oxide, uh, we can show that reaction with oxygen can increase capacity. We've applied knowledge from lithium ion and the sodium ion, and the importance of vacancies in increasing the energy density of so P3 sodium layered oxides is revealed. Uh, sodium titanate offers advantages over the state of art negative electrode, especially in terms of safety. Um, but we need to improve the electronic properties to improve its application. Um, we've shown a route to, to reduce the sodium titanate, and this in turn gives improved performance under, high, uh, under higher, higher current densities. Uh, the participants are the University of St Andrews, Lancaster, Cambridge, UCL, Sheffield, and the Science and Technology Facilities Council. And we acknowledge support from and a lot of encouragement from the Faraday Institution and indeed from UK Aid uh, because of the importance, importance of, of this technology in emerging and developing economies. Thank you for your, your attention.